Hey everyone, it's Dave. Uh, we've got a new year, so we have a new dark table. Um, I'm going to go over two things that I really like about the new version. Uh, you can see I'm on version 2.4. Uh, I'm running it under Linux, uh, Ubuntu 17.10. Uh, and we've got our newest tool that everyone's been waiting for is haze removal. Here's a picture I took uh, at Wachusett Mountain in Massachusetts. As you can see, it's quite hazy. Uh, if you've been around for a couple of years, you might have come across this. It's been thrown around in a few forums talking specifically about removing haze. Um, so the developers at Darktable have finally brought it to us, and I've got to admit, it's absolutely brilliant, um, and it's pretty simple. We just turn it on, and it already goes to work. Uh, distance, if you hover over it, we don't get a tooltip yet. But basically, as you pull it to the right, the perceived distance in the depth of field, I guess, or depth of view, is what gets affected. Um, but strength is really what we're looking at. You can get crazy with it, so go slow. But notice... It's really doing a spectacular job, I think. Pull it all the way up and see what happens. Eee! That's a bit much, I think. Um, so removing the haze, it did a great job. Let me fiddle with it a little bit here. little contrast um, maybe a little color um, I'm using the low pass module for color um, bring the radius down to three um, contrast and brightness to zero I do it on a parametric mask on the color channel so everything at this end are pixels that are fully saturated and this end are pixels that are not at all saturated. When I turn on the mask, new, it turns yellow. I like that, so I know if my mask is on. And then what I start to do is pull the slider down from the most saturated to the least saturated. And some of those leaves in the foreground were very saturated so I'm just going to keep pulling it down that looks like it'll be pretty good and now with your saturation slider you start to drag it up that looks pretty good before, after, before, after uh, a lot of extra blue up here. So to do something about that, I'm just going to go to color zones, grab the eyedropper, and drop it up here where the blue is pretty bad. And in this case, I'm just going to I'm going to mouse wheel down to make my circle a little bit bigger. Actually, I'm going to go a little smaller so I don't lose any of the color in the trees here. And just pull it down. Let's see what. Oh, and there we go. Um, did it affect anything else? How our greens look? Those look fine. Yeah, that actually worked pretty easily. All right. Um, so. This isn't a great picture, but it's a great example. Um, I feel like we're close to the end of this one, but one thing I haven't talked about is the haze still hiding out here in these gaps. Um, I'm not sure exactly what's going on in the background, but if I click on my mouse wheel, bring me in 100%, 
Well, now the haze is only in the tiniest of gaps, and you can still sort of see it through here. I don't know exactly what's going on there, um, but there's good news. Um, let me crop this before I go on. That looks good. I like it well enough. Um, if we export this, I'm just going to throw it out here somewhere. Um, let's reduce it just for speed's sake. If I have to speed this up, I will. Um, but if you remember, the haze was still hiding out in all of these gaps. Which you can see here. Um, but we've got it exported. And the exported version doesn't have as much of the haze in the gaps. It's still there, but it looks a lot better in the exported JPEG than it does in the raw, either in the darkroom or the light table. If we zoom in, and we still have to zoom in pretty far before we can see where the haze is still in these small gaps around the leaves. But um, all things said, considering where this picture started, put that away before, after, I mean, come on, from that to that, that's pretty amazing. Well done. I can't thank you guys enough. That is the developers of Darktable. All right, uh, one more thing I want to show off, something that brought me a lot of joy. Um, a new denoise option, although you wouldn't know it until you go looking for it. So. Uh, I've got a friend who shot a wedding. Um, she was in a little over her head. A lot of the pictures that were done inside were shot at ISO 6400. This was someone's wedding. Anyhow, um, let me grab one. I did a lot of the editing for her. I'm going to grab one that's just dark. Um, let me go to the other collection. Try this one. There we go. This one had some rough spots. Sorry, I should have thought ahead and had this done, had this picture selected, but um, let's try All right, this was shot with a Canon um, Uh, 70D with a Sigma 18 to 250 and ISO 6400. Exposure on it's not bad, but the noise is pretty terrible. Uh, and this is with no noise reduction. So normally, what we would have done was denoise profiled, 
wavelets, gets rid of most of the color noise, but you can still see some splotches of green. Uh, oh, another favorite thing, click on your mouse wheel and it just opens up a new instant. Um, and then non-local means to take care of the light noise and it's not bad. Uh, you wouldn't print it, it's not usable, really. How much detail did we lose in the face when we went here? Not too bad. But what I've taken to doing, especially from editing a lot of these photos for her, um, take my eyedropper, pop it right on the skin, because we want some noise reduction on the skin but not too much. We mostly want this noise reduction in the dark areas where the noise is most apparent. Um, so let's see how we did. Uh, to me, that's not bad. We reduced a lot of the noise and left a lot of the details, although I'm pretty sure this picture was not well focused. Um, so the new feature that I really like mostly works on the color noise which is why I'm zoomed in here go to low pass um, blend we'll start off uniformly and we're going to blend it on the lab A channel what is the lab A channel? well real quickly you go to your tone curve module, it works in the lab color space. The A channel is magenta and cyan, and the B channel is yellow and blue, I guess. I'm sure someone who knows more about color theory than me um, could tell you. But conveniently, most of our noise is magenta and blue and yellow, and there's some of the cyan. Anyhow. Back to our low pass. You can see, hopefully you guys will be able to see this. Um, double click twice on the mouse wheel gets us into, I think, 200%, 100% here. Um, so you can really see the noise and the color. So uh, low pass just um, on the defaults, blend uniformly the lab A channel and as you increase the radius remember A was uh, magenta and cyan as you increase the radius you're basically going to blur those two colors until they're gone before after before after now you can't increase the radius too high otherwise you'll start to affect in this case skin color so if we keep going up as you can see ew, that just got bad so we were right around 15 on that one skin color still looks good you can see the noise here in the dark areas we got rid of it there so then we create a new instance of low pass which is mouse click right here on this icon and we're going to blend uniformly this radius all the way down to start with and this time we're going to go on the B channel let's get to the dark areas so we can see start to bring the radius up and we don't have too far to go before after about skin tones. This really shouldn't have had any effect on the skin tones. Now we still have a lot of luminance noise and I'm not sure about technically speaking but all we did was desaturate the color. We still have the grain. Um, so if we believe that this is just luminance noise that's left 
we can turn on our non-local means. And that's actually that's actually pretty good. Um, but you can see we still have a lot of grain here. And I think, I don't know, but I think that's just the grain without the noise, the color noise in it anymore. So if we turn on our wavelets, it's smoothed out a lot of that grain. And we did we lose a little bit of detail? Yeah, I think we lost some detail. So instead of blending this uniformly, we're going to blend it and pretty much the same we have here. 0 and 50. Let's see what that gives us. bring us any detail back. Well, I think it did all right. Um, so there you have it, my two um, favorite things. Those are two things that I discovered. They were kind of right at the top of the list of, of new features. Um, I like having those. They're Denoising, I shoot a Nikon D7000, and nothing's really usable over ISO 800. Um, I've taken to printing and using Darktable for printing, and I'll hopefully get a video together for that soon. Um, but for now, those are the two things that I like the most, because um, denoise is something that I use a lot. But uh, hopefully, you guys found this helpful. Um, I know I picked up a little few new subscribers and I haven't really made a video in the last uh, about a year. It's 2018. I'm going to try to make more videos. Um, last I checked I was at 199 subscribers. Awesome. If I pick up one more from this, get to 200. I don't know. Feels like a milestone. Anyhow, in the comments below let me know what you found uh, for new, new, uh, new modules in Darktable 2.4. Uh, let me know if this stuff helped you at all, and um, let's uh, let's have a conversation about some of this cool stuff. I'll link to that previous photo. Um, I'll link to this one. This is in my Google Drive. If you guys want to download it and play with it, uh, and you could probably do a little better than I can. And there's still a lot of uh, funk going on, but. Download it, go ahead and play with it. If you think you get an excellent result, link to it in the comments below. And uh, let's see how everyone does. Thanks for watching, and you guys have a great New Year.